This is the first screencast for Unit 4, Monetary Policy, and in it we're going to talk about money, looking at the three functions of money and the two types of money, and then we're also going to get into the time value of money, where you need to look at that formula and think about how that affects people's savings and bonds and investments, business investments. When we're talking about the three functions of money, um, you need to know what the three are. It's a medium of exchange, meaning it's used to buy things. It's a store of value, meaning that it will add up in value and purchasing power wherever it is that I am putting it. So if I have cash and I'm putting it in my savings account, then that purchasing power will continue to grow. You're, it's a unit of account, also known as a standard of value, and so it's a way to set prices for how much something costs, and it also could be looked at with exchange rates and how prices are set from one country to another. When we're talking about the types of money, there's two types. You have M1, which is more liquid assets, and that would mean that it's something that can be used quickly in, in order to be able to pay for something. You have dollar bills and coins. The big buzzword here would be your demand deposits, and those would be your checking accounts. And then you also have traveler's checks, which are what people take um, with them on trips because they don't want to carry around a lot of cash. And so what you do is you withdraw money from your demand deposit account, your checking account, and then you're given different checks in denominations, like in 20s and 50s and 100s. And so then you go and you're paying for something, and if I'm using a $20 traveler check and it only costs 15 I sign it there in front of them, I show my identification to show that I'm the owner of it, and then they'll give me $5 in cash because it uh, the check is worth more than the cost of things. It's just a way to be safe while traveling. I don't think people use it as much because they now have their debit cards, so they don't have to carry around as much cash. The other one are the M2s, which are the M1s plus additional um, less liquid assets. The big one here are your small time deposits, like your savings account. And so when you're thinking about that, technically banks don't have to give you the money. When you walk up to the ATM and you're withdrawing from your savings account, if you look at the fine print, they have usually around 30 days before they have to withdraw all of the money that you're asking for. Um, they usually do because they want to be competitive. CDs, that's certificates of deposits, money markets where you can diversify and you can invest in different um, different companies so that if one does well with regard to the stocks and another one does bad, it's not like that one that did bad, you lost all of your money with doing it. So it's a way to diversify your assets. But the big ones here are demand deposit is an example of M1, savings account which is a small time deposit is an example of M2. Um, a credit card is not an M1 or M2 because it doesn't store value. You only use it to be able to add up how much you owe at the end of the month and then you have to use your demand deposit in order to be able to pay for it. The formula that you need to know